excuse me, we still have a car blocking the carpool lane for the school, unfortunately. It's a, a van and the owner's name is Randy. If you could please uh, move your vehicle to a parking place. Thank you.
It take very many. It can be just two or three, and I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt of times before. Surely I can say. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on you. Face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Good afternoon and welcome to Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Church. We extend a warm welcome to all visitors who are joining us. On behalf of our parish, we extend our prayers and sympathy to the family of our departed brother, George Balhoff. Please stand now and join in singing number 690 in the Red Worship Hymnal, On Eagle's Wings.
My dear friends, in our time of grief and sorrow, we know that the Lord is in our midst. And so, Sharon, as you are here with your children and your grandchildren, I hope that you can feel the tremendous love of this community that has expressed its uh, sympathy, its prayers, and now the presence of all of you in your time of grief and sorrow in giving George back to God. The scripture says so very beautifully how precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful servant. And today, my friends, we come to give a faithful servant, a loyal son of Holy Mother Church, back to God. So we begin our prayer for George. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. I now bless the body of George with this holy water, holy water that recalls the waters of his own baptism 65 years ago when his parents and godparents brought him to the baptismal font. Baptism into the family of God. Baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now at this time, I would invite Brian and Megan, Dr. Brent, Megan and Chris and Tim, to please come forward and to lay the funeral pall on your father's casket. Place your hands in the casket, please. On the day of his baptism, George put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in all the glory of the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, Almighty Father, our faith testifies that your son died for us and rose to life again. May our brother George now share in this mystery as he has now gone to his rest, believing in Jesus. May he come also to the glory of his resurrection. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, I invite you to please be seated as we listen to God's word in the sacred scriptures. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it, that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, uh, good afternoon. We gather together here at Our Lady of Mercy to commend to the Lord uh, the soul of our beloved brother, George. There are certainly no words that I or really anyone could say to your family today to take away the sense of grief and loss that all of you feel. And yet we know that we are here today and uh, all who came last night all who over these days have expressed their love and sympathy and prayers. We are here today because George has touched all of our lives in some way, big or small. So in a very uh, special way, I want to acknowledge you, of course, uh, Sharon. Uh, George loved you so very much. You shared a beautiful 41 years together. You have been a great team, and you have uh, rooted your family in faith and love. And so today, we just want the Lord to embrace you and to hold you close and to give you strength uh, today and in the days of adjustment that are to come. To George's children, uh, to Brian and Megan, to Dr. Brent, to Megan and Chris, to Timothy, to the uh, granddaughters, um, you know, Anna Claire and Julia and Amelia and Eleanor. But today as well, you know, uh, children and grandchildren give their father back to God today. And a page in the life of a family always turns at the death of our parents. And in a way today, you know, uh, that page, it turns for all of you. Certainly to George's siblings, I mean, we are, we, I, there, is there anybody in the world that doesn't know a bellhop? <laughs> so to, to Michael and Francis, to Tom and Kathy, to John and Judy, to Bob and Helen, to Don and Beverly, to Bill and Sandra, to Dick and Andrea, to Margaret, to Kathleen and Wynne, to Dan and Kathy, to all the 39 nieces and nephews, bellhops always come in bulk. <laughs> I knew that uh, Don, uh, or rather um, Sandra, will, um, Don will offer eulogy today at the end of Mass, and Sandra will read a letter from Sharon. But I do want to acknowledge as well uh, all the members of the clergy that are here. 
because we are all here because we have felt uh, the love, the support, the friendship of the Belhoff family as well. So to Father John Carville, Father Paul Counts, Father Miles Walsh, Father Tom Ranzino, the Vicar General of our Diocese, Father Randy Cuevas, Father Newton Minge, Father Shaw Bell, as priests, but also really as friends of your family, we come to pray with you and to cry with you today. I also want to acknowledge in a very special way today all the members of the St. Joseph Cathedral Prep alumni. Uh, Cathedral Prep uh, made a tremendous impact on those who became priests and those who went on discerning something else. But to all of those that went on, uh, what we learned at Cathedral Prep formed a strong, a convicted, committed lay people to build up our church. So to all the alumni of St. Joseph Cathedral Prep, uh, it's wonderful to see some of these faces. I also want to acknowledge all the friends, the co-workers, the clients of Postal Weight Netherville Accounting to the Alzheimer's services of the capital area. I want to acknowledge their presence here today. To the members of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, to those from Heritage Ranch, and those who know Georgia from his work together with them at the Louisiana Prison Chapel Foundation. I also want to acknowledge, you know, all the wonderful friends uh, from St. George Church and School, where George was also so very committed and involved, uh, he and Sharon, for so many years. I also, of course, want to acknowledge uh, the Damians. You usually have to pay to go to their concert. <laughs> I think only George could pull this one off. But you know, the beautiful thing of uh, having the Damians here today to honor George um, is that um, their music, their talent has been true voices of evangelization and renewal in our church. And so it is a great joy that they are here today. You know, uh, scripture says uh, that a faithful friend is a sturdy shelter and he who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price, no sum can balance his worth. A faithful friend is a life-saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend will be like himself. You know, George was indeed a wonderful man of gravitas. He was a man of active faith a devoted husband to Sharon, a nurturing father to his children and grandchildren. He possessed an incredible bond of loyalty and love and devotion to his parents, to his brothers and sisters. And the scripture says that a father's love gives a family firm roots. And no truer words uh, could be said of George and the Balhoff family who really have enjoyed the highest admiration, respect, and integrity of our community, both in the church and in the civic community as well. The passing of George really reminds us of the preciousness of life, the love we share for one another as family and friends, the reality that tomorrow is promised to none of us, and how delicate and cherished are the memories of good times and days spent together that we are reminded as well of the generous and merciful God who loves us to himself. And so the passing of our friend and brother George really brings us to reflect and to anchor ourselves in what is truly important, a relationship with God, our love and devotion and sacrifice for our family, the enjoyment of good and loyal friends, the importance of a legacy that is built on hard work, respect from one's peers, and the value of a truly good name. And these are the hallmarks of a life well lived and a dignity and a worth that neither money nor mere success 
can simply purchase. And such has been the life of our brother George. He was a giver, he was a doer, he was a difference maker. And so many of us are here, we are better because we have known him and loved him. And George really possessed so many of those traits uh, of which Jesus speaks in the Gospel of the Beatitudes. He possessed an absolute unconditional love for Sharon. And their love and devotion to each other has been remarkable. They have shared, as I said, 41 years of sacramental marriage and making a great team together as husband and wife. And George loved the family and family gatherings of which there are too many to, uh, to count. Uh, this year, you know, we're going to miss George uh, at Halloween uh, sitting on the porch at Brian and Megan's watching all those tons of kids from the neighborhood receiving their Halloween candy. Mm -hmm. From George's brother Bob, who donated his bone marrow years ago, to his brother Dick, who donated his kidney to George in September, from his surgery and subsequent hospital stay at Johns Hopkins, Our Lady of the Lake, and lastly at Ashner in New Orleans, I don't think a George ever had a nurse or a sitter outside of his family. At all times, uh, he had his precious Sharon, or one or more of his four children, or one or more of his ten uh, siblings uh, sitting with him. I don't think George ever spent a night alone. There was always a family member to be with him. And that is uh, such an incredible uh, vision of devotion and witness to the bond of family. What family is called to be to and for each other. And to witness uh, such devotion and love was quite simply witnessing the reflection of God's never-ending love for you and me. Our brother George knew that he was loved uh, until he breathed his last breath. None of us will ever be able to forget him. Kind, generous, giving, a strong sense of service to others, motivated by his love for God and the faith instilled in him by his parents. These are his hallmarks. You know, I went to school with George at Cathedral Prep, you know, and I can remember all those years ago sitting together on the bus coming home after the basketball games. And I am so grateful for George's advice and his assistance and his encouragement when I came to Our Lady of Mercy. And I know that he has done the same thing for St. George at church and school. Yes, George has certainly embodied the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers, and blessed are those who mourn. And so, my friends, uh, we come uh, to give our brother George back to God. George was at peace with his sufferings, and he united those sufferings with the cross of Christ at Calvary. He was ready to see his God face to face. And so, George, uh, we come to give you back to God today. May the Lord embrace you and welcome you to an even more beautiful place than your camp on False River. May he welcome you to the heavenly kingdom, to the place where the book of Revelation says so very beautifully, there are no more tears, no more pain, no more mourning, no more crying out, no more illness or cancer or weakening of the body, but only peace and joy and happiness forever. Yes, George, we give you unto the Lord today. You will be missed, 
You are so well loved. You have run the race at Georgia so as to win. You have fought the good fight. You have kept the faith. And now what awaits you, says St. Paul, is a crown of glory. And not only for you, but for all who wait for the Lord with eager yearning. Well done, Georgia, good and faithful servant. Enter now the place your master has prepared for you. Amen. So now, my friends, let us stand to place before the Lord our prayers and petitions. That George may find rest in the Lord's merciful love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, you hear our prayer that all who have been touched by George's life may find ways to touch the lives of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That John and Catherine Balhoff, Robert and Gertrude Durham, and all deceased friends and family enjoy the fullness of God's heavenly glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all of us gathered here today find courage in Christ when we approach our own death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of this precious family who gather in faith before you. Fill them now with your peace for the days that are to come. And grant now to our brother George eternal life with you. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. And now, my friends, I invite you to please be seated as our gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar. You shall cross the barren desert shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be I go before 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant George, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son Jesus to be a loving savior may find in him also a merciful judge, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, O Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those thus saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, O Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. My friends, you may kneel or you may be seated. You are indeed a holy, O Lord, the fount of all the holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time uh, he was uh, betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and uh, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set Yeah. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant George, whom you have called from this world into yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son Jesus in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. For all the deceased members of the Balhoff and Durham families, remember George's parents, John and Catherine, Remember Sharon's parents, Robert and Gertrude. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now stand to join our voices, that united as God's family, together we pray the prayer our Savior Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ to keep me safe for everlasting life. And 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 never will you hunger, feed on me, and life will never end. And never will you hunger, feed on me, and life will never
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we seek to Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. So, I'm Don Valhoff, one of George's older brothers. I'm the fifth son, 
and George was the eighth son. So on behalf of our family, I'd like to thank all who are here to celebrate George's life and to support his wife, Sharon, and their beautiful family. George was born on New Year's Eve, 1957, which should give you a clue as to why it's only fitting that he should become a CPA when he grew up. He started out as the ultimate tax deduction. <laughs> so the story's been told that our mom had a cousin, George, who wasn't her favorite, so she resisted naming any of the first seven sons after my dad's father, George Balhoff. And also our great, our grand, uh, our great grandfather, George, his name was also George Balhoff. It may have been, however, n that none of the first seven were worthy to be named George. So I, I came across a, a newspaper article from 1912 when our grandfather George Balhoff married. The article in the Bay City Herald Times said, George Balhoff is a man of sterling qualities. And it can be candidly said, should he ever aspire to the political arena, not one stone could be thrown at him, for his career is spotless from childhood to the present time, which speaks volumes for him. My brother George was certainly a testament to his grandfather George. He was also a favorite of our grandmother. My mom's mother lived with us before she died in 1966, and George was eight years old. There's no doubt that George was her favorite. Grandma made sure that if she had any candies, she would save them for him. George was a great son. My parents were so proud of George and they loved Sharon as a daughter-in-law. Whenever mom or dad needed anything, George would show up with the required items, and George always told mom they were giving away things at Home Depot. <laughs> so it's also well documented that George was a great father. I've read some of the testimonials posted by Brian, Brent, Megan, and Tim. He was truly loved, and he truly loved them. George was also a wonderful granddad. He adored those four little girls, and I know his biggest regret is not being there when they grow up and seeing future grandkids. I hope that when they come along, they'll be told how special their granddad was. George loved Sharon very much. There was never any question that everything he did was for Sharon. They were an inseparable couple whose love spilled over to the rest of the family and to all of their friends. George was a great CPA. He received many awards and over a 40 year career at Postal Weight demonstrated a demonstrated over and again his value in helping grow the firm to the strong and vibrant enterprise that it remains today. He focused on innovative technology for PNN and for their clients. He was key in developing PNN's strong relationship for supporting Louisiana's healthcare industry. His computer technology expertise was legendary. If anyone had any kind of qu computer question or problem, George was the guy to ask. In fact, it's my recollection that the first email I ever got was from George in his protective bubble in 1994 in MD Anderson at his hotel room. Electronic messages from a computer? The internet? Who knew about stuff like that? George did. George was a great man of faith. 
He was incredibly supportive of St. George and Our Lady of Mercy Church parishes. He attended retreats at Manresa for over 30 years. He prayed the rosary on, regular basis, on a regular basis, and he and Sharon have been mainstays on our Sunday night family Zoom rosaries. He was also a faithful attendee for monthly masses with former high school classmates. He usually offered to bring the coffee and donuts. All that being said, George was a great brother. You may have heard that I've got several great brothers and sisters, so I might get in trouble if I were to try and rate them. Each has their own special talent. But here's why, for several reasons, that George was a great brother. George loved to buy tools and toys, things like pressure washers, propane heaters, and chainsaws, things that he could use, but things that he could lend out to family members like me <laughs> when they needed. Whenever anyone had a backyard party and needed chairs and tables and tents, George loaded up his trailer, drove them to our house, and set up for the party. He even had special crawfish tables with a hole in the middle to throw the shells into. I think he even provided a margarita machine on more than one occasion. He had multiple Yeti ice chests to ice down the beer and soft drinks. Another thing George did is he maintained the family list and provided, to, provided it to all of us on a regular basis, which included birth dates, phone numbers, home addresses for each family member. I'm not sure who will take over this role. Maybe someone from the next generation will pick up this wonderful ministry that George did so willingly. When Tom and Kathy's house flooded in 2016, George and Sharon invited them to live with them for seven months while their house was being repaired. Many people make offers to help. George and Sharon helped. <clears throat> George actually hosted a 4th of July party for his extended Bauhaus Bal family at his False River camp while he was away at his Manresa retreat. After years of going to Manresa during the 4th of July, he switched to the end of February and joined me at Manresa. Then he could actually be with all of us at his camp on Independence Day. What a deal. He also ho hosted the Cathedral Prep Reunion Group at his camp for a beautiful 50-year celebration. He was a great brother. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. George personified this. Despite all of his health problems, he was the ultimate good Samaritan. He didn't believe in being a person on the sidelines. He was always a doer. Our brother Mike wrote a song based on the canticle of Simeon. In a few moments, it will be sung as a commendation song. Simeon was the man who spent his whole life waiting for the promise that he would not die before encountering the Christ. So when the infant Jesus was brought to the temple in Jerusalem, Simeon was there to greet the Christ child. George spent his whole life preparing to meet Jesus. Not passively waiting, but actively seeking him. We all prayed for a miracle that would allow George to return home to us. George received that miracle last Monday as he finally met Jesus and was made whole again. again. As Simeon declared, Lord, let your servant Depart now in peace. Your promise is fulfilled. 
Awake we will watch, ready with Christ. Asleep, we rest in his peace. Our brother George now rests in his peace. He'll be missed here among us. But this I know. He'll be setting up the tables and chairs and tents to prepare a place for all of us to be with him in heaven. So thank you, George, for being such a good brother. We love you. Now I invite Miss Sandra to please come forward and uh, to read a letter from Sharon. Dear George, it's hard to find the words at this time to express the love that we shared. From the first day that we met at LSU through a mutual friend, I knew that you were very special. I remember calling my friend that night to get your last name again and saying to myself, Sharon Bellhoff. <laughs> Silly, but it proves that I immediately knew that you had the qualities of a good man. My parents loved and respected you and gave you their blessing to marry their only child. Many years later, you treated them with such love and dignity as they faced their own health issues. I was so grateful for your compassion and help in caring for them. You were always there for your parents, too, as they aged and needed help. Your mom only had to mention once that she needed something, and you would run and get it. You would tell her, they were giving them away today. <laughs> we were blessed with four wonderful children, and I know they were your biggest joy. You took great pride in the terrific people they've become. Even through your journey with leukemia, you fought hard to be present in our kids' daily lives and activities. I feel like you were a living example of faith in the Lord, determination, persistence, and a positive attitude for our children to witness. I was so very blessed to be your wife. We had a strong marriage where we supported each other in both the hard times and the carefree times. You were always there to boost my confidence and to assure me that all would be okay. I always felt so loved. I was so proud of your work ethic, always giving everything you did your best effort. You were a man who was tremendously generous with your time and treasure, and you impacted the lives of many people. You loved your precious granddaughters so much, and being with them always brought you joy. Anna Claire, Julia, Amelia, and Eleanor loved you so much too. The older two will always think of your burst of happiness when we consider taking a trip to the Dairy Queen. The younger two will miss taking care of Granddad with their doctor kit. Amelia especially was always concerned with any of your bandages. We have had a wonderful life together, growing in faith and just being with our family and friends, both at home and at the camp. I wish I could have taken some of your pain and suffering on myself, but I always know you would not have wanted that. Favorite spot at the river was sitting in your swivel chair in the outdoor kitchen, watching the kids play and waiting for the sunset. I'm sure there's a similar spot in heaven where I want you to relax and watch over us as we try to navigate this life without you won't be the same, and I look forward to the day that we're together again. I love you dearly, Sharon.
Let us pray. Please stand. Heavenly Father, hear our humble prayers for our brother George. We have come to pray for him before you, that you may receive your loyal and faithful servant. For we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, with faith in Jesus Christ, we now reverently bring the body of our brother George to be buried in its human imperfections. Let us pray with confidence to Almighty God, who gives life to all things, that the Lord will raise up this mortal body to the perfection in the company of the saints. May God grant George a merciful judgment. May the Lord forgive him all his sins. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, now lead him home at peace to be safe with God our Father. And may he be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of his eternal King. George is a sign of respect for your body, which was a temple of the Holy Spirit. I now offer you this incense. May your soul arise to heaven and be pleasing unto God like the incense of the evening offering. Heavenly Father, into your hands we now commend our brother. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, George will be raised to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings that you gave him in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with all the saints. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brother George to paradise and help uh, all of us, especially Sharon, Brian, and Megan, and Dr. Brent, and Megan, and Chris, and Timothy, Anna Claire, and Julia. Help them all to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith until that day when we shall all meet in Christ, when death will no longer separate the bonds of family love but when we shall all be gathered at the heavenly throne to give God glory forever. My brothers and sisters, let us now take the body of our brother George to its place of burial.
Sleep, we rest in his peace. 